Today on TQA Weekly, I talk about byte range and how it applies to the internet and answer another viewer question. This is TQA Weekly. I am the host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis. And if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories, you can either email me at ask at tqaweekly.com, head over to my website, tqaweekly.com, use the comments forms on these pages if you're watching on a website, or get me on Facebook or Google Plus or my Twitter. And those are actually going to show up on the page or underneath in the description if you are on a website. I'm going to be answering another viewer question. By the way, thank you for subscribing. This week, it is a user called EpicBoss302 who asks if all hardware RAIDs support hard drive rebuilding. And the answer is typically yes. And in the case of better built hardware RAID devices like NAS drives, like my D-Link 325 or anything from them or other companies that are worth buying from, they may even have the feature called automatic rebuilding, which is something you manually turn on, but once it's turned on, the rebuilding profit process is automated. They indicate with the light which drive is dead, you pull that out, put a brand new one in, and it builds by itself with zero intervention other than changing the drive from the primary user. Going one step further, computer raids or software raids. Well, you can rebuild those. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. You're going to need your main board disk. You're going to need the manual. You're going to have to decipher all the cryptic code because it's not necessarily written from somebody who natively speaks from the language that you speak of. So it is possible to do it with even a software raid, but it's a little bit more difficult. One way or another though, raids are typically prone to a single point of failure. That is not typically the hard drive. It's the raid controller. So one way or another, make a backup. If you're going to use RAID, until RAID controllers are better made and a lot more reliable and don't become the laughing stock point of failure of RAIDs, make sure you have a backup and hope for the best. So this week's topic is about byte range and how it applies to the internet. The reason I'm talking about this is because in iTunes you are now required to have byte range support on your hosting account and it will drive people up the walls looking all over Google for something that's not exactly named right. So first the byte range request actually refers to the byte length in our XML files for our podcast. What happens is it's not the actual name. It's called the partial content request or 206. In fact, if you were to go to your website and use the developer console, you could kind of figure out through all that craziness in that console if you actually support it or not, but you have to play media files. So I'm going to just make it easier for most of you. So the internet is full of music, podcasts, and videos, and most viewers want the ability to skip whole sections. This is where the ability to request a range of bytes comes from. And you want to be able to do that without downloading the whole file. So the on-demand part of the feature is what we are actually looking for. And the ability to actually request partial content has to do with the fact that we want to be able to jump to a specific point in the file and request that part without buffering instantaneously. Most servers and websites already support this since we already know that Ajax itself is a kind of partial content request. So being able to do most programming already implies we have this ability. So first thing you need to do to figure out if you already have this on your favorite website or your own is try to download one of your media files. If it instantaneously plays instead of downloading, it's a pretty good point that you may have in fact this ability. However, to make sure you actually truly have this ability and it's just not the way the server is set up just to play anyway, uh, try clicking anywhere really far away from the intro of the video or music to see if it instantaneously loads. If it does, chances are you actually have this partial content request enabled. 
Now for those that are on shared hosting accounts like myself, it is possible that if you're using a basic account, you do not have this ability. So I'm just gonna put this out there. You can use software, PHP and EASP alike, to simulate this action. You're gonna to have to be fairly good in programming, but you can in fact do this. But if you're willing to spend an extra five to $10 more, I personally use the ultimate shared hosting option from GoDaddy. Domain.com and HostGator have pretty much a similar thing where they offer, at least for GoDaddy, unlimited hosting space, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited domain, uh, yeah, domains and databases and all that. And that is one of the things that is enabled. So if you're in the market for a new account or to upgrade your account, tried the ultimate shared hosting version. So basically the upper tier of the shared hosting accounts. They're not that expensive when you think about how much time you save about worrying about something you don't have to. So you may consider using software or just upgrading your shared hosting account. Next week, I'll be talking about those copper heat pipes and those really cool fans and graphic cards that make things cooler for our computer components, including our GPUs, our other chips, including our processor. So I'm gonna talk about what they do, how they're built, and how they do their work. That's all next week on TQA Weekly. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and have a great day. Thank you for listening to TQA Weekly. Show your support by liking this episode, subscribe to get our latest episodes as they come out, and share with friends and family who may benefit from such a show as this. You may send us your questions, comments, suggestions, and or stories to ask at tqaweekly.com. For our show notes, links to our Android application, alternate means of subscribing to our show, and information on joining our weekly newsletter, head over to tqaweekly.com. Stay safe and online, and have a great day.